I'm an MBA student at Wharton, but please don't hold that against me. We, we won't. <laughs> I never made it that far. I was an undergraduate student. <laughs> Could you please explain how you differentiate between types of businesses in your cash flow valuation process? We, we don't worry about risk in the traditional, uh, the way you're taught actually at Wharton. Uh, we. <laughs> But I, 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 it's, it's a good question, I, 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 believe me. Uh, but what we're, if we could see the future of every business perfectly, it wouldn't make any difference whether the money came from running streetcars or from selling software. Because all the cash that came out, which is all we're measuring between now and Judgment Day, would spend the same to us. It really, it, the industry that it's earned in means nothing except to the extent that it may tell you something about the ability to develop the cash, but it doesn't tell you, it has no meaning on the quality of the cash uh, once it becomes distributable. Uh, we look at riskiness essentially as being sort of a no, a go, no go valve in terms of looking at the future businesses. In other words, if we, if we think we simply don't know what's going to happen in the future, that doesn't mean it's necessarily risky, it just means we don't know. It, may, it means it's risky for us, it might not be risky for someone else who understands the business. Uh, in that case, we just give up. We don't try to predict those things. And we, we don't say, well, we don't know what's going to happen, so therefore we'll discount it at 9% instead of 7%, some number that we don't even know. Uh, that is not our way to approach it. We feel that once it passed the threshold test of being something about which we feel quite certain, that the same discount factor tends to apply to, uh, to to everything. And we try to do only things about which we're quite certain when we buy into uh, the businesses. So uh, we think all the capital asset pricing model type reasoning with different rates of, uh, of risk-adjusted return and all that, we, we tend to think it is, well, we don't tend to, we think it is nonsense. And, uh, 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 but we do think it's also nonsense to get into situations or to try and evaluate situations where we don't uh, have any conviction to speak of as to what the future is going to look like. And we don't think you can, can compensate for that by having a higher discount rate and saying it's riskier so that I don't really know what's going to happen I'll have a higher discount rate. That, that just is not our way of approaching things. Charlie? Yeah, this great emphasis on volatility in corporate finance, uh, we, we just regard as as nonsense. Uh, it just if we have a, uh, a statistical probability of putting out a million and having it turn into uh, uh, yeah, put it this way, as long as the odds are in our favor and we're not risking the whole company on one throw or anything close to it. We don't mind volatility in results, but we want us the favorable odds. We figure the volatility over time will take care of itself on at Berkshire. If we have a business about which we're extremely confident uh, as to the business result, we would prefer th that it have high volatility than low volatility. We will make more money out of a business uh, where we know where the end game is going to be if it bounces around a lot. I mean, for example, if people reacted to the monthly earnings of C's, which might lose money eight months out of the year and, and makes a fortune you know, in, in, in November and December, if people reacted to that and therefore made its stock as an independent company very volatile, that would be terrific for us because we would know it was all nonsense. And we would, we would buy in July and, 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 and sell in January. Well, obviously things don't behave that way. But when we see a business about which we're very certain, but the world thinks that, it, that its fortunes are going up and down and therefore it behaves volatile, with great volatility, you know, we love it. Uh, that's, that's way better than having a, 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 a lower beta. So we think that, that we, we actually would prefer uh, what other people would call risk. When, they, when we bought the Washington Post, I've used that as, yeah, it went down 50% in a matter of a few months. Best thing that could have happened. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, uh, 
business was fundamentally very non-volatile in nature. I mean, TV stations and, and a strong dominant newspaper, that's a non-volatile business, but it was a volatile stock. And, uh, you know, that is a great combination from our standpoint.